If you're watching with us right now, lift up your voice in worship. Lift up your voice in worship. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, it starts with sorrow. It starts with hope, but hope dies. It starts with hope with Elimelech and his wife, Naomi. Starts with hope. Fleeing from a famine in the book of Ruth, chapter 1. Running away from famine. Going into Moab. They leave the land of praise. And they walk into a wash pot. They forfeit their praise. And they land in the waste baskets of God. On the waste pots of God. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1. Naomi and her husband, Elimelech, and her two sons, they step out of praise. Listen, no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter what goes on around you, stand in the land of praise. I say stand in the land of praise. Paul and Silas, even in the midst of difficulty, they stood in the land of praise. The problem with the people of Israel, when they sat by the rivers of Babylon, and there we wept. We sat down, and there we wept. When we remembered Zion, they said, for the wicked carried us away captive, and required from us a song. They said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? In the land that you call string, that's where it is right to sing. In the land what you call impossible, that's where it is time to sing. In the land where they say nothing can happen. That's where it's time for you to sing. Hallelujah. Don't move from your praise. There are some things that you see. They are waste. Don't move from your praise. Don't let anything take away your praise. Stay by your praise. Hang by your praise. Live by your praise. Stay in your praise. Hallelujah. I can't get a witness over here. Come on, lift up your voice of praise. Let me see you. May God reward your praise in January. May God reward your praise in February. May God reward your praise in March. May God reward your praise in April. May God reward your praise in May. May God reward your praise in June. May the harvest of praise reap in July. May the harvest of praise come forth in August. May the harvest of praise shine in September. May the harvest of praise lift up his head in October. May the harvest of praise flutter around you in November. And may the harvest of praise be in your grasp in December. Jump from your chair and say, you can't take away my praise. And the Bible said the song changed. God said, Moab is my wash pot. If you move from the land of praise to anywhere else, the acids of life will burn your possessions. The acids of life or the acidity of life will burn everything that you call dear. Stay in praise. That's where life is. And the Bible said, Naomi, a woman from Judah, a woman from Judah lost all hope. She looked at her two daughters-in-law and said, even if I were to have children, they can't look after you. Are you going to wait for them? He said, I don't have hope. He said, I don't have hope. And I said to you, hope is an expectation. He said, I don't have any expectation. I'm walking through this year with expectation. Hey, I have some desires. I have some cries. I have some things. I'm going to stay with expectation. And the Bible also said that same word that was used, expectation, as, expect, as hope. That same word is also rendered as a cord, a rope by which you hang. And I said last week that Rahab, she's living on top of a wall. The Israelites blew the trumpet and raised the shout. 
And the wall is coming down. But she's hanging on to the cord. She's hanging on to the cord of hope. Your hope is a powerful thing. Where hope is, there is a reward. The Bible says, he that must come to God must first believe that he is. And is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The Bible says that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut off. The Bible says that the hope of the righteous will never be destroyed. Keep your hope. I have hopes for you for 19, uh, 2018. I have hopes for you. I have hopes for living streams. I have hopes for any, everyone who is listening to me. I got my hope. You tell somebody I'm hanging on to my hope. But the Bible said in Ruth chapter 2, something changes. It is good to have faith. It is good to have hope. But there's one thing that people need to understand. The Bible made a statement that jarred my senses. The Bible made a statement that made me jump up. The Bible made a sentence that made me sit up. Ruth chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. I pray that there will be Boazes in this house. I believe that there will be wealth in this house. Come on, people tell me that, Pastor, why are you talking about wealth? The Bible says that a poor man who was, who was full of wisdom, and his wisdom rescued the city. But the Bible says that the voice of the poor man is not heard. The devil knows we are living in days where the kingdom of God must have wealth. The kingdom of God must have wealth because it is wealth that propagates the covenant. I am telling you something that is happening. There is a sinister attack on men of God everywhere. People are coming at us. People are coming at us. Of course, I accept some things. Because, you know, sometimes foolishness would make you display wealth when you don't have to do so. Jesus Christ wore one of the most expensive robes. Roman centurions, Roman soldiers, they know what is quality. Jesus had one of the most expensive robes. But nobody knew that his robes were expensive. Until he died. When they held the thing, then they said, hey, don't tear it up. This one is very expensive. This one is designer. So you can wear your wealth without displaying your wealth. You can wear your wealth, but without letting other people feel bad for their poverty. You can wear your wealth without displaying opulence. You can wear your wealth without making a public show by de declaring how rich you are. The taxman is coming after you. That's one of the things that the charismatic renewal movement has done. The charismatic renewal movement opened display of opulence foolishly because that's what it is. We are like the, the, the prodigal son and actually, Luke chapter 15 is for the charismatics. Yes, that's it. It wasn't written for unbelievers. The first one, the story of the lost sheep. That is people who move out of sheepfold and be jumping from one place to the other. Exposing themselves to the dangers this world offers. Then the second one is the lost coin. That's talking about holiness. And then the third one is the lost son. That is talking about prodigality. Everybody gets up and he wants to do because I see one power or the other. People lay hands on, I lay hands on people and they fall. They fall down or they fall upon me with their wealth. And as a result of that, Matimi, as a result of that, they want to break away. The story of the prodigal son. And it is when they have wasted talent and they have wasted themselves, then they come to themselves. Food of the charismatic renewal movement. The it Bible says, he, he fed himself with the food of pigs. You turn to somebody and ask the person, you swine. Fed himself with the food of pigs. I know if anybody is not saying it, then that person is. They've answered you. You turn to somebody and ask the person, you swine. The food of, 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 of pigs is, um, what do you call it? Husk. What is husk? Husk is everything that takes part in the digestive process, but it doesn't add any calorie value to you. 
So there's no calorie value. So it just fits you. It just hypes you up. There are so many charismatic people when you ask them, how was church today? It was wild. What did pastor say? It was wild. <laughs> how was church? Tell him, it was wild. What did pastor say? Wild. Thank you. Powerful. How was the anointing? Powerful. What did pastor say? Powerful. How was the move of the spirit? Powerful. What did the choir sing? Powerful. It is, ah! But still, you're empty. You don't come into the presence of God without him making you pregnant with purpose and pregnant with destiny. That's the reason. That's why we call it the Holy of Holies. That's why in the Holy of Holies we take incense. That's why the only man-made thing allowed in the Holy of Holies is incense. That's why in the Holy of Holies we come with worship. And the purpose of worship is to make us pregnant with destiny and pregnant with the glory of God. That's why in the Holy of Holies you have shitty mood and you have the tablets of stone in it and Aaron's rod in the ark. That's where it is. That's where in the Holy of Holies. So in the Holy of Holies when we come into the house of God he wants us to open up our wombs, our spiritual wombs, for him to place a seed and to make us pregnant with purpose and pregnant with destiny. When you go to church and you can't find anything to hang on by what I've said all through, then you missed it. You must have at least one thing that you can hang on. May God speak to somebody right now. I look in Ruth chapter 2. The story changes. The story changes. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, I have faith. I have hope. But look at what she said. Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Tell somebody, go. Even if it's a man, call him my daughter. Say it again powerfully. Go. Say it again. May the blessing of Ruth fall upon somebody right now. May the, may the blessing of Ruth fall upon somebody here. If you know what I am saying, you will say amen properly. May the blessing of Ruth, may the favor of Ruth, May someone who was disqualified, may someone who had no inheritance, may that inheritance come to you in the name of Jesus. Naomi said unto her, Go, my daughter. Now I'm looking and I'm beginning to scratch my head. Now if you look at it very carefully, Ruth was a Moabitess, cut off from the blessed commonwealth of Israel. She had no portion in Judah. She had no portion Kose Kose. I'm speaking God like a fante. O Kose Kose. God said, Moab is my washpot. That is the things that are waste. The things that stink. The things that burn. The ammonia. The uric acid. That's it. The hydrogen sulfide, it was like rotten eggs. Both all land in the wash pot. That's where Ruth is from. So she's not entitled to blessings. And number two, she's a widow. And in those days, widows stay at home for the men in the family. To feed them. It is the responsibility of the family to look after the widow. 
And sometimes when the men abdicate on their responsibility, it is held as a charge against them. They must look after the widows. And this same scripture is repeated in the New Testament where God says we should look after the widows. That is why on Christmas Day and I hope on other days when Ligidi Pume, that we can also stand and bless the widows. May God speak to every widow here and give them a blessing. And may God find those who are young amongst them, may God relocate them. Minus my mother. Why? I don't want any trouble. <laughs> she didn't say why. If you have not said why, then don't say why. Anyway, that's a, just a joke. Oh God. Kilo bushaka bahata. Listen to me. You'll be very, very surprised, even in these days. An elderly lady, about 85 years. You get it. Uh, we were, we're in Brazil and we're ministering. I was with one of the young men. And then I said to them that one of these young men is not married. And then when we came and stood, when, after the service, I was going to change. She came and stood in front of me. He said, Pastor Benez. He said, he, me, me. This, the. Then she began to do her eye. Then I said, oh, Lord Almighty. I quickly moved away. And I said, everybody carry your bed in. <laughs> then I said, brother, he's interested in you. He wanted to move. She also was moving with him. So you never can tell. The young and the old, that God pours his spirit upon all flesh. So now let us just keep on going. Ruth was cut off. And Ruth should not be in the field. Because a widow, she needs to stay at home. And somebody to feed him. Uh, feed her. And that is the reason why. Hey, the God that we serve. He knows how to take care of his own. When he said, I'll be a father to the fatherless, a husband to the widow, a mother to the motherless. He means every word that he says. And here is the principle. It is the same thing that happened in the days of Elijah. When there was a famine in the land and God said, I am stopping the brook Cherith. I'm stopping the brook Cherith from giving off water. I'm stopping the ravens from feeding you. Go to Zarephath. There is a widow woman over there. And the reason, the Bible said, something that's very interesting. When Elijah got there, he found the woman at the gates of the city. What the woman was doing, she was at the place of legislature. That is where all the big men sit. That is where all the people, big, big people, the nobility sits. That was where Elijah was in. That is where decisions are made. That is where rules are made. God sent Elijah to the seat of government. God sent Elijah to the seat of governance. I want to lift up a prayer for this government. I want to say, God, help this government. I want to say, God, do something for this government. I want to say, God, the expectations of people are in this government. May the expectations of the people not be cut off. Let me also speak to government, and I'm not afraid. Listen, that position is temporary. You are not going to be there forever. Somebody came, and somebody is gone. And right now, as we preach accountability, as we speak accountability, what you judge others by, you would also be judged. I know some of you are trembling and you're afraid for me. Osofo, continue your sermon. Yo, I've heard you. I'll continue my sermon. But I'm saying, God help this government. Please help them. I pray for the president. I pray for the ministers of state. I pray that you, you, will, and you will embalm them, O oh God, with grace. And that you give them wisdom. Father, that their feet will not slide in slippery places. But their feet are going to stand firm. In, not in corruption, but in righteousness. And not make any decision that is inimical to the salvation and the health and the wealth of this nation. But they will make quality decisions that will put Ghana forward. You, O oh God, are God. That is why when we rise up to sing, we say, God bless our homeland, Ghana. So God, bless our homeland, Ghana. God sent Elijah to the seat of government. And there was a widow woman over there. And the Bible says, what was she doing? She was gathering sticks. And for all throughout the day, from morning till evening, she had only gathered five sticks. Or three sticks. Only three. Gathering sticks. And collecting only three. That means she picks one. And drops it. Then she picks another. To drop it. 
in the days of famine, the leaves dry up, the trees dry up, branches fall off, so there are a lot of twigs around. If she wants to make firewood, it will be easy to pick. But so when they asked her, they said, I've only gathered these three or five. That means I pick. Do you know what she was doing? She was not there to gather sticks. She was there to remind the elders that you people are supposed to appoint somebody to look after me. And nobody is looking after me. So she's there, there and she's dropping the distance, the sticks. She picks. But then God sent a voice and said, Elijah, go to the seat of government. Pick a trumpet. Prophesy over the decision of government to ignore. Speak to the woman and tell her, listen, your, your help does not come from men. Your help comes from the Lord. Lift up your eyes. Don't look to the hills. Look up to God. Your help comes. May God supply you help where men have failed to help you. May God visit you where men have blocked the door. In the name of Jesus. Any door that is blocked. I open that door. Now listen to this. And Elijah prophesied. And said listen. You don't need the elders to feed you. You don't need a decision of the council. You don't live by government budget. You don't live by economic hardship. You don't live by economic policy. Let the petrol price go up. Let the petrol price go down. Let the electricity tariffs go up. Hey, our help comes from the Lord. And he said, the cruise of oil will not fail. Neither will the cake of bread. In the name of Jesus, those who trust in the Lord, may your cruise of oil never fail. Even when there is nothing, may you be fed. Even when there is no means, may God, the, the God of ways and means, make something available for you. In the name of Jesus, fees, school fees, challenges, academic challenges, hey, business, jobs, where there are no jobs. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God of Sabaoth, I speak to your situation, just like Elijah prophesied to the widow of Zarephath. May the cruise of oil never fail. And may the quick cake of bread never perish. In the name of Jesus, jump from your chair and say, my help comes from the Lord. So Ruth, 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 when she said, I want to go, what she was doing was wrong. Stay home like Naomi and your king's men will feed you. But Ruth said, I have faith. If I don't add works to it, faith without works is dead. Oh, there are many people charismatics. Today I'm on your case. When they say, the Lord is going to bless you, open your mouth and receive him. Ah. Ah. Morning. Ah. Afternoon. Ah. Evening. Ah. You have done. Ah. What is in your hands to show? Let's check your pocket. Let's check your bag and find out what is in there. If you say you are a man or you are a woman of substance, drop $10,000 now. If you can't, shut up. Ruth said, I have faith. I have hope. But I need to go and work. I need to be employed. I need to engage. Can I tell you something? Your breakthrough is not in your home where you sit. Your breakthrough is not in your place of comfort. Your breakthrough is in the fields of harvest. Ruth said, I want to work. Ruth said, I want to work for the big man. I want to work for the house of God. I want to work. I want to be employed. I want to go where the harvest is. I want to go where the lost souls are. I want to go where the people who are not born again leave. I want to go to that place. I want to speak to them. I want to gather the harvest. Even though it is not my portion. Even though it is not my place. Good people are sitting down. There were many widows. 
in, in Judah at that time. But Ruth goes to the harvest and comes back with the Boaz. What are you looking for? What do you want God to do for you? What do you want? If you sit down lazy, not doing anything for God, your hands will be empty. Your hands will be empty. Ruth said, I need to get up and go and work. I need to get up and go and work. Two things. I need to engage my hands. I need to engage my hands. Paul said something that is very important. If a man does not work, that same person is considered an infidel. Must be called anathema maranatha. Somebody who is not preparing for the coming of Christ. <coughs> Lazy charismatics. Going to the fields. Going to the bush. And all you do, Monday to Sunday, ayah, abba, prayer, prayer. When they ask you, what is it? He said, I'm believing God for work. You can believe God for work and be staying in your home for the manager of the bank to come with a torchlight or usono and come and open the door and look for you and say, yeah, yeah. Baba, come and work. You need to get up. But there's something even more powerful in the harvest fields of God. It is when you engage your talent, your treasures, and your time. That is when God rewards you with a blessing. Ruth went with bare hands. But by the time she was leaving the harvest field, Boaz was following her. What do you want from God? What are you seeking? Work for God. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. And all other things shall be added. Don't sit on your backside in church and warm the pews. And say, the blessings are coming. The blessings are in the fields. The blessings are in the fields. Now you can look at him. And the Bible says, when she gleaned in the fields, it was after the reapers. Do you understand when people have collected the harvest, the surplus that is left on the ground, the kanzo of blessing, the omushishi akaka of blessing, the rice asiyeho, the black one, that was the portion of Ruth. Because in actual fact, she can't glean where the righteous are gleaning because she's cut off. She's an infidel. She's a foreigner. She's a Gentile. So she can't mix with the righteous people. So you know what? People don't even know. She said, listen, I am coming from the land of Moab, the wash pot. I'm now in Judah. So even when the crumbs fall from the distance, then she'll be singing. Blessed are your horns. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fall, artist. Then she pick one of glory. I'm here, I'm here. So the just of God. Yeah, born of this. In his blood. He said, I'm in Judah. You let me collect the crumbs. That thing which Ruth did. Even though the reapers have come. And they've harvested. And there's nothing. Ruth said, even what falls on the ground. I will pick. Do you know? It is the same story. When the woman came to Jesus. And asked Jesus. And said to Jesus, you need to, to bless me. You need to heal. And Jesus said, you can't give the children's bread to the, to the dogs. And then the woman said, yes, I am a dog. But so is your great-grandmother. So 
is your great grandmother. And when your great grandmother came to Judah, hey, what fell from the ground was given to her. So me too, the crumbs that fall from the table, I am also entitled to it. That was what the woman was telling Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, I have not seen a woman of great faith because faith cometh by the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So that woman had read that the great great grandmother of Jesus, who was Ruth, by the way, she picked the crumbs. Can I tell you something? So far as you are in the harvest field, what they say you can't have, you can have. What they say you can't go, you can go. What they say cannot be yours, it can be yours. Jump from your chair and say, I'm going to work. Oh, there they My Jesus. Come on, can we plow the fields of worship right now? Can I get a witness over here? I see the roots coming through. I see the workers. I see people who want to work for God coming through. I with her. have collected. Can I say something? Tell somebody it's not too late. No, 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 no. You're not saying it powerfully. Prophesy over the person. In the name of Jesus, I remove delay. I remove delay. There shall be no more delay. There shall be no more postponement. There shall be no more postponement. In the name of Jesus, your harvest is here. In the fields of God. I remember many years ago in a group called Calvary Road. We are not among the richest of the rich. No, not at all. Some of the young girls looked at us at that time and called us he baby small men. That's what they said. I remember some of them making mockery of our clothes. I remember those days. Can I tell you something? A man who had one pair of trousers, they called the evangelistic trousers. I wore it everywhere. A sister looked at me and said, I was passing by your house, Brother Marquis, and I saw your trousers hanging, and I knew you were at home. Because that's where I wore everywhere. But today, but today, May heaven, may heaven pick you up. May heaven pick you up. As you labor in the fields, may heaven pick you up. May heaven pick you up. I speak to every need of yours. Just like Ruth went barehanded, but came back with the Boaz. May God speak to your need in the fields, in the work of God. As you employ your talents, as you employ your treasures, as you employ your time in the house of God, may God reward you. Every servant who wants to work in the house of God, jump from your chair and say, I surrender. My Jesus, my great. Jesus. 
Even that which was falling. That was what the woman told Jesus. What do you mean you can't do a miracle for me? When your great-great-grandmother Ruth was in the harvest field, the crumbs that fell from the reaper's hands, she was collecting it. What the reapers left, she was collecting it. Where even though there was no expectation, she was entitled to it. You better do the same for me. And Jesus said, it has to be done. Because this woman has read my history. This woman has checked the word. And she's standing on faith. It must be done. Now let me tell you something that is also very interesting. Now, when she was re reaping, when she was collecting the waste, when she was collecting the leftovers, read this with me. Just one line. And, and her, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. The Bible says, and her harp. Tell somebody, I believe in your harp. Well, come on, give somebody a high five. Say, I believe in your harp. There shall be a harp. There shall be a harp. No, no, you are not prophesying it properly. I don't like the way you are saying it. There has to be a harp. Come on, say it powerfully. Say it with a shout. There shall be a harp in your life. There shall be a harp in your life. May God give you a harp. H-A-P. May God give you a harp. In the name of Jesus, I declare the season of harp. I declare the season of harp. In the name of Jesus, I declare the timings of the harp. I declare the events of the harp. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, oh I trust you are you are and ever
when Ruth stepped so into the fields, sweet. when Ruth said, I'm going to work, then the Bible said, and hap happened. That word happened there. There's a Hebrew word for it. Mikre. Mikre, if you can't pronounce it, you say Mikra. That's my soul. And the hap was to light. I'm coming to something. That word Mikre. That word hap there. The first word that came, the Hebrew word for it, the English translation, and an accident. There was an accident. When she said, I'm going to work in the house, I'm going to work in the fields, there was an accident. Oh, now when we talk about accidents, everybody reads negative into accidents. But it is not a negative accident. Sometimes there's a powerful accident. Moses drew near to that burning bush and there was an accident. David came to the battlefield to look after his brothers and there was an accident. Joseph was sent into the prison and there was an accident. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were put into the fire and there was an accident. Paul and Silas were in the prison and there was an accident. Peter was in prison and there was an accident. I came to announce to you that this particular accident is a divine accident. That is when God plans. That is when God conspires. That is when God works it out. That's when God plans. In the name of Jesus, I see a plan of God for somebody's life right now. May that be a divine accident. May that be a divine accident. May God meet you like Moses in the burning bush. May God meet you like Anna in the temple. May God meet you like David at the battlefield. May God meet you like Daniel in the lion's den. May there be a divine accident. Jump from your chair and say, there shall be a divine accident. Yes, Jesus. Pastor Father, you keep playing. You are hitting some notes in my spirit. Somebody needs a divine accident under the sound of my voice. Lift up your hands and raise prayer right now. Somebody needs a divine accident. Somebody needs something. Lift up your voice and say, God, I am here. Jesus. Jesus. right now. So God, I need an accident. divine purpose is not going to come into your life if you stay in your room a lazy person not doing anything for God but you got to get into the field and there'll be an accident some people met their wives in service some people met their husbands in service some people met this thing in church not at the disco the disco babies the way the lights come that's how the disco babies do come. Today, Esumion, 
The next day, a Bartomeus. You understand? Guess what? In the fields, when people work for God, when people do things for God, I'm telling you, the blessings there. You want a wife? You want a husband? Get into the field. Hey, the first time I led a prayer meeting and things began to happen. Some of the girls said, Hey, Aso moi. Hey, the guy. Then some of them came. Brother Marquis, I want to be your prayer partner. And then me too, I sang. Na, 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 na. Somebody won't get this. Unapo. Do you understand? When people rise up to work for God, the glory of God that is invested in you, the power of God, I said something. God calls you according to purpose. God has his purpose lying down. He looks for personalities to catch up that purpose. Then he empowers the purpose. And the, and the personality becomes a beneficiary of the power. Who knew David when he was in the backside of the desert? But the day he came and killed Goliath, all the women sang and said, all the women sang and said, David has killed 10,000 people. He killed just one. He killed just one. Just one. What are you looking for? Get up and do something for God. Work for God. And the Bible said the second one. The Bible said something. That happened. The second word that was used there was chance. Chance. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Chance. And I close with it. Chance. Oh, for a thousand times to who said my You know, you see, you didn't go to a city. Yeah. 
I returned. Like Ruth, I returned and saw under the sun. How many of us live under the sun? I returned and saw. I returned and apprehended. Our Bishop Duncan Williams said, I returned and comprehended. I returned and apprehended. I returned and saw. I returned and captured. I returned and viewed. I returned and saw. I returned and it became a reality, not a dream. The race is not for the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. What time? What time? What time? Jump from your chest and what time? Open your mouth and pray. What time? What time? Yeah. Hey.